712 now, the copperhead and the timber rattler. Both of these snakes are found in Connecticut, and while both are venomous, it's very unlikely you'll find either one. They're kind of tough to find, but uh, these snakes are more afraid of us than we are of them. At least Scott Tucker thinks so. Speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> From Expedition New England, he joins us, of course, to tell us more about these creatures, why we need to protect them. Oh, so you're on their, your side, their side. It seems crazy. Yeah. I know it seems crazy, but it's not. They're a very important part of the food web. The, the ecosystem, right? Yeah. Now, this is a copperhead, venomous. What do we need to know about this guy? Or this girl, I should say. It is a girl. It's a she. What we need to know about her is that they want nothing to do with us. They are not the kind of snake that would actually go after a person. Yeah. The only way anyone could ever potentially get bit by this snake is if they cornered it or held it. Yeah, that's yeah, you're, it. You're holding her down here. She, she's okay. I just noticed that she moved her up, up front there. And I noticed too that you get the tube with an open end of it kind of pointed in my general <laughs> direction. Thanks for doing that, Scott. Listen, what a guy, huh? I'm telling you. Now, b by the way, before we see it, the clip that you brought in, uh, the, the, so you, how aggressive is she? She looks pretty mellow right now. They, you're talking about how let, they're not going to come after you. They're never going to come after you. Okay. But as, in terms of going after prey, how aggressive are they? They are ambush predators. Mm -hmm. So they're really, so they've evolved this uh, ability to just sit in the quiet of a dark spot and they will wait until something walks by them and whack them. I would think that, uh, that she would blend in beautifully with, with the leaves and fall on the ground. Totally. Those colors. She is beautiful, I will say. Yes. You know. A face mother could love, but anyway, she is quite good to look at anyway. All right, so we have a clip of three copperheads that you saw along with your guide, Chuck and Anicelli. Am I saying that right? Anicelli. Anicelli. Uh, let's take a look at that, uh, that clip now. The northern copperhead plays a critical role in keeping the balance with our food web. They keep rodent populations in check, like mice and rats, small birds, other snakes, as well as frogs and salamanders. There is absolutely no reason to mistake the identity of a copperhead for any other species. Take a look at this creature. There's nothing else in Connecticut that looks like this. Not once has it struck at either of us. None of them have struck at us. Thanks to the keen eye of Chuck Anicelli, we're getting a close-up look at this magnificent pit viper. Look at the musculature. Breathing. Absorbing oxygen. This is a magnificent creature we've got to protect here in Connecticut. All right, Scott, so these are not endangered, but they are being encroached upon by land development, right? That is correct. Right. And the pockets where they're found, they're pretty abundant. Which is where, would you say? If you put a pin in the middle of the state, middle town, yeah. middle field, now that's not ex the only place, right, but, right. but there is an abundance of them in certain areas, especially in and around trap rock ridges. So what can people do to protect them? They're not endangered, but like you yeah. say, what can they do? Support initiatives to protect large tracts of open space. Mm. That okay. is one of the most important things we could do, is just keep large corridors of open space so they can be where they want to be and we can be where we want to be. Let them do their thing. They actually help us out with, the, with their contributions to the ecosystem. Now, this is not the only snake we're talking about. Another venomous snake, we always think of rattlesnakes, of course, and they do exist. In fact, I've come across, I was just telling you in the break, I've come across a couple of them just outside of uh, Connecticut up on Brace Mountain in New York. Um, yeah, they're big. They're a lot bigger than this, than this girl they get much bigger. Yeah. The timber rattlesnake. And we have pictures there. There's we, one there. We do. Yeah. And I was almost afraid to tell you all about the timber rattlesnake because it just conjures up all kinds of fear. And especially the timber rattlesnake, there's three different, maybe four different color morphs of the same identical snake. Okay. So you got dark phases, color. you got tan, tan phases. Yeah. And you know, the only thing I, I'll, I'll tell folks is that you've got to see a rattle to be yeah. able to confirm it's a rattlesnake. It yeah. sounds silly. But every snake, including this copperhead, will vibrate its tail at a high frequency, and you'll think it's rattling. Really? It's not. It's just, it's just excited. And, and letting it's you know it's there. Exactly. Trying okay. to make a vibration. So it's, get away from me. Well, I'll tell you, the, 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 some of those pictures, they were coiled there, and that's how one of the rattlers I found on the mountain, I was climbing up the trail, and it was sitting right there in the middle, basking, in the fr and, and 
the other guy and I just kind of didn't see them, got, got within about six feet and I suddenly hear the Wow. Boy, did we back down real fast. Good thinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, very cool. And they are endangered, are they not, the timber they rattlers? They are, yes, in the okay, state of so Connecticut. For the same reasons, I imagine. Same reasons. All right, same Scott, reasons. I wish we had more time, but you know what? I love when you come in here. There's always something that's interesting to see and talk about, and we can't wait till you come back again. For more information, you can go to our website, of course, WTNH.com.